well, I'm sure this must have happened when you decided to stop drinking. You must have thought this isn't good. I'm not going to be funny anymore. I thought that. I okay. thought I thought there was going to be ramifications. Yeah. Okay. And so, what were they? What what do you, what did you what did you foresee happening? I thought I wouldn't be funny. I thought that people wouldn't like me. I thought that um, I wouldn't be able to meet girls if I wasn't drinking or or you know or having drugs or. Um, Right, so that was things. what you were afraid of giving up if you stopped drinking. Right. What were you afraid of happening if you kept drinking? Um, I was afraid of not achieving my dreams. I was right. afraid of, you know, uh, ending up a drug addict. I yeah, was afraid so, of, hurt, okay. of dying in my sleep. Something, you know, dying under the influence. Okay, so there, so there, yeah, it's not like that doesn't happen to comedians. Right, it happens all the time. a lot. Yeah, it's one right. of our, dude, it's one of our, it's one of our go-to well, moves. Right. Well, right, exactly. <laughs> well, it's on an occupational hazard because you're up late at night and you're around <laughs> bars all the time. It is, it is. Cause it is. It, 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 because you're up late at night and yeah, you're Yeah, Chris Farley right here. Right, right. Happened exactly. to him. Well, and it happened to all sorts of comedians and rock musicians. It usually happens at about 27. You know, weirdly enough. Mm. So, okay, so you were afraid you were afraid you're going to die, or you're afraid you're going to become addicted. So, so let's say what what of life what would have life like been like you for for you if you were addicted? So you don't have a career anymore, no, right? So you've given all that up and failed. Mm. So that's fun. So that's going to drive you even more <laughs> yeah. to, towards drugs. Yeah, it would have been all my dreams. It would have been miserable. Right. It right. would have been so, hell. Exactly. Is that so? Why quit drinking? So I don't end up in hell. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's a reason. There's a reason to stop. And then if you make that hell real, it's mm -hmm. like here's all the details of my personal hell. Yes, let's avoid that. Right. So then you have something to run the hell away from. Right. So now you to have something towards. towards and something to run away from. Mm -hmm. And I'll say this too, as you for if there's any young men or women out there who are listening to Jordan feeling like, well, I still I don't know if you know if I start doing something different, like my friends are gonna act a certain Yeah, they are. They are. Yeah, yeah, that's but you're right. also you're gonna start creating conversations, you're gonna become the intrigue because you're gonna be bringing something new to the table. And you're also gonna find out who your friends are. Yeah. Because if you're starting to put your life together and you have friends that object, those are not friends. Those are just people you know. They're not friends because a friend is someone, this is one of the hallmarks of a friend. Here's two hallmarks. Mm -hmm. A friend is someone you can tell bad news to. And they won't tell you why you're an idiot and they won't interfere with your suffering. They'll just they'll listen. Just, they'll just listen and maybe they'll suffer along with you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can tell bad news to them and they won't tell you some worst thing that happened to them. They'll listen mm. and they'll suffer along with you. But a friend is also someone you can tell good news to. And the friend will say, wow, in this veil of tears, something good happened to you. Great, man. Congrats. I'm wonderful. It's rare. It's unlikely. Good for you. I hope 10 more things like that happen. And they're not envious and they're not jealous and they're not one up in you. And if you're trying to get your life together, it's actually, if you're trying to get your life together and your friends get in the way, that's actually real useful for you because you've now identified who your friends aren't. Mm. And you might think, well, I can't give them up. It's like, oh, yes, you can. And not only can you, you should, and it would be better for them. Because if they're aiming down and they want you going down with them, there's nothing good about what's happening to them, and there's certainly nothing good about that for you. Yeah, they're not going to, and then they're going to learn, wow, if I, I'm going to lose friends if I continue in these directions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Do, is it hard for, why is it hard for people to let go of what's so familiar with to them, even if it's bad? Well, because it's complicated, you know, and the thing, that's a really good question. You discount the risk of familiarity that they're familiar mm. with. So like, let's say... Because people are in relationships. People are in relationships with the drugs and alcohol. People yeah. are in relationships with humans. People are in relationships with jobs. People are in relationships mm. with their own selves. And they live, they're live. they living a lie every single day, but it's, yeah. it, it's familiarity. Yeah, well, you say, I have a job I hate. It's like, well, yeah, but I'm not dying from it. It's like not as bad as it can be. So you, you kind of, you kind of, you factored in the risks already. They get invisible. You think, well, I can't jump out of this job because what about all the risk? It's like, yeah, no kidding. You got to make a, you got to get your resume in order. You got to send it out. You got to send 50 of the damn things out before anybody will call you back. Then you have to go get interviewed and maybe you're not any good at that. You have to come up with a story while well, you're a good employee and maybe, and maybe you're not yet. So you have to figure out how to do that. It's like, what about all these risks if I go look for a new job? It's like, yeah, absolutely, man. Those are risks and they're harsh and no wonder you're avoiding them. What about the risks for you to stay with this job you absolutely hate? Mm. Well, let's think that through. Okay, so I have this dead-end job. I hate it. I'm getting bitter. Where am I going to be in five years? I know where because I've watched this with people. You're going to be you're going to be just like you are now, except a lot more of what's good about you is going to be gone, mm. and a lot more of what's terrible is going to be amplified. And you're going to be like 
in five years, you're going to be 10 years older instead of three years older. Yeah. Right. Because so, it kills your spirit somehow. Oh, man. Yeah. So, it's like, you think, oh, my God, there's a terrible risk in pursuing this new job. It's like, yeah, there is a terrible risk. There's a terrible risk in you staying with your job right now. And so, one of the things that's re really freeing to understand is that you're screwed no matter what you do. Ah. Uh. There's no secure path forward. Give it up. It's risk everywhere. You think, mm. oh my God, that's terrible. It's like, yes, except for two things. You can pick your risk. That's the first thing. So you get to pick your poison. That's ah. something. And second, you're a lot tougher than you think. Mm. So even though there's risk everywhere, if you confront it forthrightly, what you'll find is that you can actually handle the risk. And that's the security. That's beautiful. And there's so much growth to be had right there when you realize how much... Like there were times I was like, man, I could never be a sober person mm -hmm. because I'm afraid of you know, I can't communicate with women or I'm afraid to, you know, stand around in a circle with tough guys without having like a beer in my yep. hand, you know, or like all these little crutches, you know, yep. I can't. And then I remember when I got like 90 days sober, I was just like, holy shit, man. Like it was like the first time I'd ever done something uh, like for myself, yeah. you know? Yeah. And it just, man, it felt, it felt unprecedented yeah yeah well it was it well, felt, like I'd, it felt you, like I'd gone to the moon almost. how old were you when you started drinking uh i don't know probably like 17 or 16 you know kind of regular yeah it was pretty basic and i never did a bunch of it you know but my biggest thing was just emotional sobriety like i was so drunk on my own insecurities mm -hmm. and low self-worth well alcohol alcohol really is a good drug for coping with anxiety that's why yeah. people use it so it does too if you if you really like alcohol it does it does Two things to you. It makes you more extroverted and mm -hmm. enthusiastic while you're on the ascending limb of the blood alcohol curve, which is why you have to keep drinking mm -hmm. once you start. Because if you plateau, that yeah. goes away. So you got to keep drinking. Okay, so that's one thing. It makes you more enthusiastic and, and more full of positive emotion. And the second thing it does is reduce anxiety. Yeah. And so if you are a bit more socially anxious and you also have that positive response to alcohol, which everyone doesn't have, by the way, then it's a great drug. But the problem is it's, well... <laughs> It's a great drug for the moment. Right. <laughs> right. There's there's consequences. Yeah, this sounds when it's not great. Well, it, it also alcohol is an interesting drug because it 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 actually doesn't make people stupid. This has been tested. Like alcohol dr people who are drunk will take far more risk. And you might say, well, that's because they're too stupid to understand the risk. It's like, no, they're not. If you ask them about the risk when they're drunk, they can outline it perfectly. Mm. What it stops them from doing is caring about the risk. It's actually, and that's part of the anti-anxiety components. Like, yeah, the risk is, that's why you can drive around drunk at high speed in a car, which is a really stupid thing to do. Yeah. We used to do that in the back roads in Northern Alberta. It's fun. Yeah. You know, but but people died all the time doing it, especially in the winter. It's like, yeah. wow, this is great. It's great until your head's gone through the windshield. You know, like so many things. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like jumping off a cliff. It's, I'm flying, which is true <laughs> until the last one-tenth of a second. It's like, then you're not flying, man. It's yeah. like, yeah, yeah. So, so alcohol, alcohol has exactly that effect. It is a great anti-anxiety drug, but it does stop you, and you said it stopped you, from learning the skills that you need in a social circumstance to be able to cope with that. Mm -hmm. So then it actually stops you from dealing with the anxiety anxiety mm -hmm. you don't have to learn how to overcome it that's not good yeah so yeah you yeah you're not really learning mm -hmm. you're kind of just staying in the you're just you're baiting the ang you're you're kind of meeting the anxiety with a little bit of light medication yeah. but you're never getting through whatever the anxiety was yeah you don't learn you don't have to learn the skills well right. you said you like to stand there with a beer in your hand will give you something to do you didn't know what else to do and then you didn't have to learn right. i had the same issue like i started drinking when i was 13 probably yeah and, and and that's late in canada yeah <laughs> that's right i mean i was <laughs> yeah. way behind my neighbors they were slogging it back when they were four. <laughs> oh, i've been in edmonton and i've seen people i mean it's just mm -hmm. people love to drink up they, there they it's just a, it's, a, it's a fun culture right yeah, it's, well, a, it's a far, cultural thing on well, the farther north you go the more the drinking becomes necessary especially oh, yeah. in the winter you know so and there's not that much to do in those isolated small towns yeah i drink so, i drink my own blood probably yeah well that's enough, it well that's know? funny when i used to go back to the little town i was from when i was an adult even if i hadn't had not had anything to drink for years it was like well what are we gonna do well let's go to the bar why well because there actually isn't anything else to do <laughs> so you know and so you end up there but but the, but the, the the alcohol is it's 
it's well, it's a hell of a it's a hell of a drug, man. Do you, you think? Watch it. Do you think it's going to start get out uh, to get outdated? I start to think that alcohol is almost a drug of the past. Slowly, like I could see us like with psychedelics and stuff like that becoming a little bit more in like the common sphere of conversation. Um, well, it'll be interesting to see that we just legalized marijuana in Canada. Eh? Yeah, yeah, like it's not. It's not completely legal yet, but the bill was passed. Mm -hmm. And so Canada is doing this countrywide experiment. And I know there is some data showing that in counties in the U.S. where marijuana has been legalized, the overuse of, of opiates for pain has decreased substantially. Awesome. And the crime rates have gone down, interesting. Well, sto people yeah. stoned on pot. It's like Dude, it's hard to pick somebody's break, pocket. Can yeah. you go break into a building? Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're they, just not going to get it together. To you might knock for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. you might knock at the front door. Yeah, I don't think yeah. you're going to break in, And though. you're not going to... Yeah, you might. That's right. You might knock. You're not going to go out... What, are you going to go out in the alley and have a fight? <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> a so, real slow fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. right. Well, while you're watching your hands, like yeah, so it's that's... like chess with your hands. Exactly, exactly. That's not going to happen. So yeah, who knows? Like I mean, if we had to make a bad drug legal, the worst choice was alcohol. It's yeah. definitely the case. You know, and I'm saying that as somewhat of a fan of alcohol. Mm -hmm. like, no, just, me too. Yeah, I like it. It's But it's but, a bad drug. Man. And is it also starting to become archaic as we get into drugs that are, you know, like, uh, you know, people are using psychedelics more where people are a little bit curious about drugs that make you think mm -hmm. um, instead uh, of... In, 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 instead of drugs that make you not think. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah, because alcohol is kind of an escape into, well, I, it's not full unconsciousness, although it certainly can be. Yeah. But yeah, and alcohol also makes people aggressive. It's the only drug we know that actually makes people aggressive. Mm. So, and so, so you see a massive effect on crime rates because half the people who murder someone are drunk. Oh, yeah. And half the people who are murdered are drunk. <laughs> And, you know, and you're most likely to be murdered by a family member. Yeah. So I've been joking with my audiences is like, well, if you really want to get killed, the best thing to do is go drink with a family member. <laughs> yeah. So, which is actually statistically true, which is terribly, terribly <laughs> comical. Crazy. It's like, yeah, go get drunk with your family if you want to die. Thank you guys for checking out this clip. And if you want to see another clip, then you can look at this clip or this clip, either one of these. So did you pick one or are you still just watching me do this? Because this is alarming. <laughs>